harder than it seems It's not letting go of me What's there to be afraid of? Time to give it all I made of Tonight I wanted to have three guests and it kind of fell into place. My second guest tonight, I don't know her all that well, but her name is Susan McCord. I met her about a year ago, thought she was fantastic. She's a relationship specialist. She wrote a book called Dear Cyber Susan, Dear Cyber Sue, sorry Sue. Um, and what I love about her is uh, we started talking one night and she loves to empower people and she likes to help people turn their life into a better place and uh, I asked her if she'd speak tonight. She's a brand new person using our product but I felt that it would be nice to have someone come up and share what she thinks about the product and how she can help you in your relationship. So everybody let's welcome Susan McCord. And you can get your book tonight for $15 and she'll even sign it and autograph it in the whole nine yards. And it's just not for women, it's for men too. So men can read this as well. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for the glowing. I'm going to on the mic. Yeah, I think that mic works, right? Whit, does that mic work? Whitney, Mac, oh, Roy? Yeah. Great, nice. I hope my Miriam's working. Yes, it looks beautiful. <laughs> you look fantastic. I've only been using it for three weeks. Yeah. But I'm really liking it, and um, I do a lot of HD television, and uh, well, video, let's say video, and I've got about 300 videos online to do with dating relationships, and I also do interviews. So it is important to me, they say 50 is the new 35, so I'm trying to look 35. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so I'm using the cream, I'm really liking it, as I say, it's been three weeks, and so far I'm really liking the no fuss, no muss yeah. um, aspect of it, and so this I'm finding I'm really enjoying. So what I want to do now is talk about, we're fixing the outside here, and when you're in relationships dating, it, whether it's a new relationship, a marriage of 25 or 35 years, I met somebody here tonight who's married 35 years, you always want to keep it fresh. And the one thing that we all do, no matter how hard we try not to, is we sabotage our own happiness because we give up. We become complacent. We just decide that, oh, I don't need to do all this anymore. I'm already married. I'm in a relationship. Oh, I'm out of a relationship. I've got too much um, baggage. We all sabotage so much in our lives. And what I like to do is make everybody feel at every age that you're worthy of love. It doesn't matter what your past is, where you've come from. And believe me, I've come from some crazy SHIT. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm here to say it can happen. And my book is basically about restarting your life, um, bringing the staleness out of it and, and bringing empowerment back into your who you are and who your partner is and changing just everything that's gone a little bit astray in your life. And every one of us is guilty of being complacent. Mm -hmm. I have been a little... There's a chapter in my book about women being the bitch word. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, yeah. I think it's fine. And common. I've been there. I've been one. I've met them. Um, there's, a, there's a chapter for men as well. And the reason I want this book to be for both sexes is because we're blaming each other. It's driving me crazy. We're blaming each other. Oh, women are all a bunch of high maintenance whatever. The guys are all, or the girls are all saying that guys are players, all they want is sex. Well, a lot of this is true, because it is happening. <laughs> but you have to know how not to invite it into your life. That's right? true. That's true. And we're all inviting these things into our life. And mm -hmm. I am a bit of a law of attraction girl, but I don't preach it. I have been practicing it. I have got sticky notes all over my house. I want my own talk show. I want a paid <laughs> talk show. I want this. I want love in my life. I'm remarried for the second time, and very happily. The first one was a lot of work. It made me become a single mother. I, I was a flight attendant for many years, so I have learned a lot the hard way. And I don't want everyone else here to learn the hard way. It's, it's not necessary to have drama and repetitive friggin' crap in your life all the time. I agree. You know, and we do it because we are so used to what's familiar in our life. What's familiar is drama. What's familiar is that 
fear or I'm not good enough or we just keep repeating that same sort of story in our heads and the problem is where is it getting us? We're not why do we keep inviting the same kind of people into our life? Most of it thank you for asking that because I just actually did a video on pattern dating. Because what happens is we do repeat a lot of stuff that we've done before. Mm -hmm. And just look at your photograph. Whoever has a photograph album anymore, I told you I'm old, right? <laughs> but look into your iPhones and see the photos of, of people you've dated. Either they're starting to look alike, they're acting alike, and because you're repeating that same thing, you're not happy. You just keep doing the same thing over again. So what you have to do is change it up. And how do you change it up? Figure out who you are. You're attracting it. You're the one that's got all the demons inside of you that keeps right. bringing all this stuff back into your life. I am the biggest guilty person for that. But what I was doing was I was going a little bit up the ladder. But I want you guys to go like five ladder runs, not like little steps like I did, so that you have 15 different, in my case, men that I was dating, <laughs> breaking up with, marrying, breaking up with, having a child, all that stuff. So I think the trick is to find out who you are, in answer to your question, find out who you are and what has made you become this person. Because a lot of our stuff is from very, very early on in our life. But we are told that we're not allowed to talk about it. Because it's our fault. We allowed it. It's our stuff to deal with. But there's a lot of stuff that you've dealt with that you need help with. So you're only dealing with little pieces of it. So if you deal with the internal stuff from whenever it happened, and most of us know when it happened, if we really look back, then all of a sudden you go, oh yeah, yeah, oh I can see where it started. You know, I was abandoned, I was abused, I was um, turfed to the curb by five, well in the guy's case, five girls. And one girl told me that I wasn't worthy, she wanted a doctor. Or, so it takes a lot and puts it into who you are. And eventually, it's like the bully that keeps throwing crap at you. You start saying to yourself, that's who I am. And so now, I'm here to tell you that's not who you are. <laughs> who you are is a really fun, fantastic person that's worthy of a loving relationship. <laughs> you really are. Everybody is. And I'm not trying to, I know I sound kind of like a preacher right now. Like, <laughs> that's okay. But I, I'm not. I'm trying to make a point that we're all worthy of love. We have to quit sabotaging it. We have to find humor. We have to find... Uh, um, look at, I'm looking at you because you're sitting in front of me as a guy. Look at you and say, you're a great guy. I'm not going to label you. But we do that. We're all labeling each other. It's driving me crazy that we're all sitting there, in Vancouver especially. Vancouver is known around the world as the worst dating place ever. <laughs> Isn't it? It's true. Yeah. And then I talk to a guy from Toronto who tells me, Toronto's really bad. <laughs> and then I go, okay, so we got Toronto and Vancouver that are really bad. And then you talk to people in Montreal, oh yeah, everybody's just like, woo! <laughs> because Montreal's a lot more out there. So all we have to do is change our thinking, that we believe it, that in ourselves. Not every guy we meet is a player. Not every guy wants to have sex on the first date. Not every girl <laughs> wants you to buy them a you know, $100 bottle of wine. Watch people for five minutes when you're meeting them. See who they are, how they respond to other people. And you'll save yourself a lot of drama. It's just watch them. That's true. <coughs> I don't know when you want me to stop. Oh, you're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying your book. Does I'm anybody? Buying. My 30th anniversary next year. Oh, good job. He's one of the good ones. Yeah. You do it. Yeah. And that's why you're married for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I remarried. So this is my second, as I mentioned earlier. And I went for what I wanted. I actually wrote a list. I know it sounds the old law of attraction again, but I actually wrote a list. When my son turned 19, or eight, yeah, 19, I said, okay. I was dating in the meantime, that's where I get a lot of stuff here. <laughs> but I couldn't date that much because I didn't want my son to be involved in it all, right? But I was a flight attendant, so I dated a little bit outside. <laughs> Not like coffee yeah. to your me. Yeah. Like, what are you thinking? <laughs> so once I decided that, I wrote out what I wanted. And I didn't say, I've got to have all this money, got to be the best little guy, got to have all this. I just wrote my, like the characters, the things that I knew after 18 years of being by myself, raising my child, what was important to me. So I wrote them down, and I'm not kidding you when I tell you he knocked on my front door. It wasn't the FedEx guy, 
<laughs> but he literally knocked on my front door. He was a friend of my brother's, who my brother was staying with me for a short time. And it took me a long time to look past the friendship with him, because I was single now. My son had moved out. Mom's playing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can play now. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going, all right. <laughs> so then I met him right away, and we were just friends. And then it, it grew, and then he literally, to get my attention, threw me over his shoulder, carried me down the stairs at a restaurant we were at with a group of people, and said, this has gone on long enough. <laughs> you know. And so we've been together for seven years, and it's really great. And I have to slap him around once in a while, and he has to slap me around once in a while. Just not literally. Not literally. Not literally, not literally but you know, playfully. And because we still, even after seven years together, there's still stuff. He's from an, uh, another marriage. I'm from another marriage. It happens. You know, you've got stuff. You just have to know when the stuff takes over your life. Now, 30 years for you, have you found stuff that you have to work on? Oh, it's continual. It's continual, isn't it? Yeah. And people will put so much effort into a job, oh. but they don't put it into their relationships. That's yeah. true. And this is the thing that I'm trying to change, that when you find somebody that you want to be a partner with, you need to put as much effort into that as you do your job, all the time. Because you're not maybe getting money back, but you're getting back something that is a beautiful investment. Mm -hmm. And you, after 30 years, you're here, you're, you're saying all these wonderful things. Where's your wife? <laughs> She's actually at home with our kids. Our, we got a, oh, and you came? That's so wonderful. Our dog, not today, so <laughs> 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 but that's you're there for each other. And it's yeah. compromise. Compromise is a really big thing in a relationship. So I don't want to keep No, I, I think. I think you're fantastic. Thank you, Don. Thank you for having me. I don't know where all that came from. Because I love her because she's not talking about, she's using our product. It's and there for everybody. She's talking about the inside, and the inside is yes. really important. So thank you. And get the new room because you need to have both. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you gotta look good too. Good